Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Nice to have you with us this morning. And I'm um, about uh, a minute or two late. I'm so sorry for that. And uh, yeah, welcome. Welcome. Very nice to have you with us. And uh, I really look forward to uh, sharing a little bit of golden nugget with you this morning. Really excited about what I want to talk about and just the story I want to share this morning. I don't think we're going to be that long this morning, to be honest, uh, but this is going to be a good chat and uh, really something that's going to be of value to you. I promise you that I'm going to talk about, uh, let me show you, I want to talk about these two brushes. This brush, 16 bucks. So what did I pay for it? 13 Rand 90. I don't know when this was. This was a while back. This brush, 415 rand so uh, i want to talk about why is there such a difference in a brush that is supposed to be sort of the same thing or, or able to do the same thing in our mind and why are people like me willing to pay 415 rand for a brush like this so uh, yeah really excited to, to sort of share that with you and uh, let's get uh, sort of into into the story. So good morning, good morning. Uh, Kovas, thank you so much. I saw your, your comment earlier. I was still sort of preparing, so I wasn't uh, able to respond yet. But uh, he says that he is addicted to the show and he's going to miss the FBI opening. Yes, today is the start of the FBI's digital convention. Uh, so I hope those of you that will attend will enjoy it. And uh, if you're going to the gala dinner tonight, I might just see you there. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, I hope you enjoy that. Thanks, Kubis. I appreciate it. Uh, I have a little surprise for you uh, in a second. So just hold on. Uh, Almin Lotteren, good morning. Nice to see you. Uh, has been a long time. Yes. Uh, I've got Renee. Good morning, Renee. Tinas, good morning. Uh, Malcolm, good morning. Denise. Wow, everybody's here. G uh, Carol, good morning. Uh, ben Kleinans, good morning, Ben. Uh, I've got Chad van der Wald, good morning, Chad. I hope it's going good. I was yesterday on Pretoria. Um, to the Kanyo Gedenk, uh, when I passed, uh, what is it? Castle Walk, is that the place? Uh, Mark Lane, good morning. Nice to have you with us once again. Uh, Jaku Ruts, good morning. It's been a while. Well, not that long. I did see you the other day. I'm lying. Good morning. Adrian Jordan, good morning. I hope you had a good birthday. Um, was a long week without Friday's show. <laughs> yes, uh, I also had a call from Kobus on Friday. He says, like, he's sitting in front of his computer and he doesn't know what's going on because the show's not coming on. Um, but yes, so thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Uh, it's it really means a lot to me all the support and all of that uh, so just from the bottom of my heart thank you so so much uh, yeah so there's a few things uh, on Friday we've got a I'm going to be a special guest on the what do you call it on the uh, morning commute with next gen planners they started it uh, earlier in the year when we're in lockdown and all of that so if you want to check that out they did post the links uh, I will probably send the link via WhatsApp so if you're not on the WhatsApp uh, as yet, please go and, and connect with me on the portal. Uh, and then on the portal, you can just say get notifications. Uh, so let me make that easier for you. If you want to scan the QR code at the top of the screen, you can get to the portal. And on the portal, there's a button that says get notifications. And that'll automatically uh, let you join the WhatsApp group. So if you're already getting notifications from me for, on WhatsApp, please don't do that means you're going to get it twice so uh, but if you want to join that group it's just a one-way group it's only me posting so no there's, there's no conversation going on there it's literally just so that you know uh, when things like this happen or when there's something uh, that I need to let you know of so uh, yeah if you want I, I will share the link on whatsapp and you can then uh, also watch that it's completely free uh, it's going to be half an hour there's a whole host of things happening so that will be friday morning so really looking forward uh, to that and they're really privileged that they've asked me to be a special guest on that show so so that's the one thing um what else was there um just quickly yeah so just remember if you want you can go check out the review of the virtual financial planning summit that took place uh, we had a catch-up with kevin uh, last week friday Really some interesting stats and some interesting information. So it's here on the channel. If you're on YouTube, just check it out. Um, it's it's on my page uh, where you'll find uh, that. So, um, yeah, what else was there? It feels like I'm forgetting something. Uh, all right, so apart from that, um, so I am obviously very, very happy and uh, excited to welcome my first supporter. Uh, remember, we said that you're able to uh, support the the show and uh, you can do that through uh, visiting our Patreon page. So uh, if you want to do that, um, you could just go to patreon.com forward slash VCF. I also sent the links and everything and the information and why I'm doing it 
on uh, WhatsApp. So if you want, you can support me from, from that point of view. It's absolutely voluntary. Uh, there's no uh, expectation that you have to do it. But I'm really uh, excited to welcome uh, my first one. And there you go, Kubis. Thank you. Uh, sorry, oh, it means a lot. Uh, thank you so much uh, for for being my first. Uh, and you're an Avenger because there's different levels. You can choose at which level you want to support. So Kubis went all out and he did the Avengers. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, good to give you the badge and uh, say thank you very much. I deeply appreciate it. And uh, if you want to follow Kubis' example, please do so. Don't be shy. You can stop it at any time. Um, there's different levels that you can choose. So uh, just from my side, Kubis, thank you very much for, for that. All righty, so let me get into the show. Let me not uh, waffle on about too many things today. I think it was only those two things that I wanted to sort of share with you. Um, let's just see quickly. Nadia says, good morning. Summit was so insightful, especially succession planning. Yes, I think... For me, particularly day two and three was really awesome, and uh, yeah, but uh, you know, different people are taking different things away from it. So, uh, but it was really good, and I'm happy to hear that it'll be back next year already. I think the seventh of September is the date. So, and if we're allowed to sort of go to <laughs> conferences and stuff, you know, there might be a way to uh, to see each other again. So, so really looking forward to that. So, so take a note of that one. Alrighty, so what is it that I want to talk about? Um, sort of when I said this is the, the difference that your story can make. Um, I was always, when I started doing miniature figure painting, you know that I've, when I've shared my hobby with you before on this channel or in the show, we spoke about it and I showed you all the different things that I've painted and that I've built and I'm now busy building a whole host of things so I can paint them again. And uh, that sort of made me think like uh, I had these brushes come from from England. Um, now, these are not 100% the same as the ones that I want to talk about, but they are very similar, and they are a lot more expensive than these ones. Uh, so these are the ones that you'll get at uh, PNA, CNA even, I think if they still do things like that, but any art shop would probably have these if you go and look for them. And I want to show you, so let me, let me quickly uh share my screen first of all let me just see where are the prime art so here we go all right so if i share this with you here you can see i'm looking at a number two brush so just a normal what we call a round number two it looks like a normal brush that you'd know 16 rand at the moment for a brush okay i paid 14 bucks for this one so there you can see that is what uh we've got in terms of in in terms of that but I then went ahead and got four of these brushes <laughs> because they have to come from overseas. Um, it was quite a thing to, to sort of get them here and it did cost me a bit of money. But there is a reason why I sort of looked at this and thought like, you know, this is this is the thing that I that I need. And uh, but the one thing that I never could understand was why are these things so more? Why, are, why is this one brush that looks exactly the same as the other brush? apart from maybe the color of the handle or the color of the bristles, why is there such a difference in, and I'm not, I'm not going to pay 415 Rand for a, for a brush if I can get it for 16 bucks. I mean, anybody that's got some sense in them will tell you that's ludicrous. But then I sort of, I sort of um, found the story behind, because I started doing research and saying, but why is this particular brush so expensive? versus the other things that I'm getting. Now, the first thing to note is that this brush, so luckily they've got two different color handles, uh, but this grayish one is the synthetic, so it's made from synthetic bristles, uh, so they're not real hair or anything like that, um, but this is what this one is made of. This one is made of Kulinski sable. Well, this one in particular is red sable, but the one I want to talk about is made by, from Kulinski sable, and that is seen to be the best hairs that you can make a brush from. It makes the best tip and all of that. But where did all of this start? So I want to share with you the story of how the Kulinski Sable, the Windsor and Newton Series 7, by the way, yes, it sounds like a gun or something. Um, <laughs> I was, I guess in the hands of the right person, it can be very dangerous. They can, they can paint some awesome stuff. But what happened was in 1866, Queen Victoria requested that uh, they must make a brush that is the best will be the best and and finest watercolor brush 
available and it must have the finest, finest tip of all brushes. So the first time that they created this brush was in 1866. And... Uh, there are only, and yes, yes, sort of the, 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 the kicker, that they're still using exactly the same process. So in this case, I'm pretty sure that there's no human being doing this. This is probably a machine making this um, and pushing them out at high quantities. These brushes uh, from Winsor & Newton are made by hand, still the same process. There are only nine brush makers in the world that can make these brushes. And by the way, I've linked... On YouTube in the description below the actual video that you can go and watch because you have to like I can tell you the story but you have to see it you have to see what this entails and hear from the people themselves who are doing this but there are only nine brush makers in the world that can make these brushes to become a brush maker there's a three-year apprenticeship most of them have got 27 years of experience 28 years of experience uh, that's the and yes, the other kicker that I absolutely loved when I heard this is that because of the, the, the intricacies and the complexity and the, the preciseness that is required, it's only women who are making these brushes. Um, it's absolutely amazing. So there's obviously a few, a few parts to, to this brush. Uh, you've got the hairs at the end. You've got the, the ferrule that holds that or that connects the handle and the, the hairs and holds them in place. And then you've got the, the handle itself. So Winsor & Newton, they're only using for that particular brush. And just by the way, uh, if you think about how long it takes, if you take the biggest brush that you've got, let me see if I can show you quickly. Uh, where is my share screen? Uh, let me just choose there, uh, Winsor & Newton. So uh, there's not a proper, um, but let me just go down here. I will show you sort of the biggest one you've got. You see here. Uh, Round 8 is special order, and you can see how big they get, and around 10 is special order. But watch that price, 4,450 Rand, not for all those brushes, for one. For one brush, for 4,450. But these biggest brushes take up to a week and a half to produce. So, I mean, that is absolutely something, uh, and, and when you watch the video, you'll see exactly why. So what is the process? So let's start with the hair. So what they do with the hair is that um, it's all done by hand. Uh, they only use Kulinski sable, which they say in weight is, uh, it costs three times as much as gold if you weigh the same weight. Um, it comes from a Siberian weasel that is hunted sustainably every spring. So there's very strict codes and conducts and things. So they hunt them sustainably. They only use the, the guard hairs from the tail. So when you see a picture of this, this weasel, you'll see that they've got a, like a, 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 a big tail in that. So they use it from there. And uh, then what needs to happen is, because there's a lot of wool in between the hairs, it needs to be removed by comb. And it's all done by hand. And then what these brush makers are able to do by hand, again, is separate those hairs into anything between 28 and 32 millimeters in length just with with their hands so no measuring no nothing they take them out and they you'll see on the video they put them out in in, in groups and and all of that so they can even see when hairs are the wrong way around because they've got to be all facing the same way and the reason why they use Gulinski sable or why it's it's the best that they found for brushes ever is uh, they've got scales that go in one direction and it makes uh, for a broader sort of surface to, to, to carry the watercolor and, and all of that. So it's just absolutely amazing to see this. And then they've got uh, the ferrule, which is obviously then uh, attached at the end by, uh, obviously, um, just, just by a machine. And uh, they use birchwood handles that they import from Italy. Um, and then it gets stamped with a name, uh, the number, and, and all of that. But they produce... And you'll see, I mean, there's only nine brush makers in the world that can make these brushes on their own. The other people that are there are still apprentices. They're learning because obviously they need to continue this. And, and to think that those people, if you look at that little factory, makes 25 million brushes a year. And that, I mean, you're not going to make 25 million brushes if people are not buying them. And, you know, once I, uh, I sort of watched this and I saw what went into it and the care and the preciseness and just why is this a better brush than anything else, I went out and I got me one, you know. So it's just absolutely amazing if you know the story behind something, 
You know, um, if you think about Mercedes Benz, sheer elegance. Um, I don't know, even know what um, what 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 Audi and and BMW is saying. But, you know, there's a thing behind, like, this is why we charge what we charge. This is why this thing is better than something else. So then I started thinking about, but what about your story or my story? Why am I doing something? What is it that's driving me? I, I think about, uh, and I've mentioned Kim on the, on, the, on the show before, and she was going to be on last week, and then something happened. So, so we, just got to, we just postponed it. Uh, she couldn't make it. But if I, once I listen to her story of what's driving her and why she got into financial planning, I mean, that is so powerful. I think about Puli. Puli is a, is, is a lady that I worked with uh, that is with Morebo, uh, which is a Liberty franchise. Um, she has such a powerful story of why she got into financial services in the first place. And, uh, you know, I'm so inspired by those kind of stories. And it makes such a difference, one, to how you view the person. Secondly, you know, um, what is it that, that drives them? And uh, you, you just experience everything in a different light. So my question to you then today is, you know, how are you, what are you doing with your story? What is your story? You know, have you sort of, I think maybe a lot of people feel like they've just ended up here. This was sort of my last option. And I read something the other day on LinkedIn where somebody was saying, well, this is my last, this is often somebody's last and only option when they can't find a job anywhere else. And then some will find that they love it and some will find that they don't. But, you know, what is your story? What is, what is your, uh, and we shouldn't be afraid to share our story, you know. Um, I mean, I've got a very interesting story of how I ended up where I am today. And also there's lots of things happening at the moment. So, um, and all of this is sort of culminating to where my life is going. And um, it's just amazing. So that is my question to you this morning. What is your story and how are you weaving that story into your business and your marketing and your value proposition uh, and your client experience? You know, um, if, if you really want to understand, I'm, I'm busy building a, a program and as part of that program, we're really looking at, you know, uh, the new way of, of selling and uh, what that really entails. You know, and it's all about being able to put yourself in the shoes of the other person, being able to see it from their point of view, being open to their perspective, and not using our own frame and our own sort of experience to, to decide what is and what is not. And, uh, you know, to really decide, is it this a good fit for me or not? Is it this a good fit for the client or not? And all of this, I think, lives within your story. So my challenge to you today and sort of, uh, you know, what I want to want to want to ask you to go and do for the rest of the week, seeing that I'm only back next week, you know, is go think about your story. And if you want, you're welcome to share your story with me as well. You can send me an email uh, at info at franchise.co.za. Um, you know, if you want to WhatsApp me, send me a voice note, whatever, you're welcome to do that. But what is your story? Why are you doing what you're doing? Or maybe even there's things that happened in your past, whether good or bad that has really shaped the way you do things today. But maybe you didn't make the connection about like just how powerful that story can be in my business. Uh, or maybe you're of the, of the viewpoint that your personal life is completely separate from your business life and you don't want to mix the two. And it's not to come and bear your laundry in open. That's definitely not what this is about. But what this is, is to, if, for you to understand, number one is what drives you. You know, what is important to you? Why do you, you know, why, why do you focus maybe on the things that you do? Why are certain things more important than others? And by simply sharing your story or by weaving your story into your business's story, if you want, you will attract the right people for the right reasons. People will resonate with it. Some people will be like, no, thank you. And that's great. So I don't know, how did you experience sort of that? And I know if you're not painting, you maybe won't have an appreciation for, for the difference between the two brushes. And you may still think that Francho to pay 415 for this one, if you can get this one for 16, is still ludicrous. But, um, you know, once you understand what goes into it, how long it takes, the care that is taken, the skill that is required, and, uh, you know, then you view it at a, at a different sort of thing. And then I can paint little details with this thing that I can't do with this one. Um, there's a lot that happens. So by the way, this thing starts splitting and hairs go everywhere. This keeps a fine point and uh, it's, you can paint very, very fine detail 
So, uh, so yeah, that for me was an investment. Again, it wasn't it wasn't something that costed me anything. But um, by the way, so yeah, what is your story? You know, what do you feel? Um, so let me just quickly run you through through the comments. Uh, I see Rizan is here and Charity. Good morning, ladies. Um, Corvus, I felt so guilty to hundred. <laughs> Thank you, Corvus. I don't need to feel guilty. Um, but I appreciate it very much. Um, it is such a small amount, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, Karen. Nice to see you here. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, Renate. Hope it's going good. Niku, good morning. Nice to have you with us. Arun, good morning. And then uh, nothing like storytelling. Franchot, when I have my cup of coffee with struggling advisors, I listen to the stories first as it's critical. It's absolutely critical. And, uh, you know, it's it's... Unless we share our stories, you know, our vo probably we won't always be heard. You know, there's got to be something that we've got to share. So, uh, yeah, that is that is my sweet and short story this morning. Uh, I don't gonna, I'm not going to drag it out and make a whole thing of it. Um, I want you to go watch the video because it is so, you can see how they comb the hairs and, and remove the wool. You can see how they separate it, how they turn them around so that they're all facing in the right direction, how they make them fit perfectly into the ferrule how these things are all put together, how they how they get the lettering on here, the whole story behind it. So all of it. it's only a six minute video. It's not a very long video. So please go go and check that out. Um, yeah, and that is sort of my story. So um, just very quickly, if you want to uh, obviously uh, support, please uh, you can go to patreon.com slash VCF or just check your WhatsApp because I did send it. And um, yeah, if you want, uh, please remember to like and share and subscribe and do all that good stuff uh, for, for us to, to help us grow the show. We're on 707 uh, this morning, so thank you very much. I think everybody here is already or already subscribers, so uh, thank you very much. But um, that is where we've, we've grown to. There's a whole host of things in the pipeline, um, a, a few interesting ideas and things that we're going to throw around. So let me share with you one of them. Uh, so one of the things I want to do, as soon as I can figure out exactly how, um, we're going to do a live, live show. So what is a live, live show? <laughs> well, a live, live show is where I, I want to do it once a quarter. Uh, and uh, once a quarter, what I'm going to do is probably, I don't know, rent a place at Silver Star Casino or somewhere. Uh, maybe there, maybe at Monty, maybe like different places. But what I'm going to do is then we're going to have an audience, obviously within the restrictions and what is allowed and not allowed and blah, blah, blah. But then we want to have an audience there, but we're going to broadcast live from there, the show, 8 o'clock on a Tuesday morning. And that is what we're going to do, but in front of a live studio audience, if you will. So we're going to have guests and obviously speak to them. And you can actually see how I do this and uh, how all of this then works. So really excited uh, about that. Uh, I'm busy with the, with the planning. It'll probably only be next year. I don't think I'm going to do it this year. But uh, but that's going to be the live, live shows that I talk about. So if you see it on the Patreon page as well, um, you know, people that are on Avenger level will be invited as VIPs and, and all of that. So, um, yeah, so the uh, so that's going to be great. I'm really looking forward to that, as I said. Um, and if you've got any ideas about how we can make it happen, please get in contact with me. So, uh, yeah, so we can see because obviously there's a, a lot of costs and things involved so so i want to see how we can get it done and it uh, the idea is that it won't cost you to come you're not gonna we're not gonna sell tickets it's gonna be open for you to to attend but um yeah that is that is the idea so i'm very excited about that one i don't know what you think about that but uh, i think that's going to be very awesome and uh, you know we can maybe have multiple guests on the morning and just have a good discussion uh, around two topics maybe because it's easy to have two guests at a time Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have a fantastic week. If I, uh, if you're at the gala dinner tonight, I will see you there. Uh, otherwise, uh, I will see you on uh, social media, WhatsApp, or maybe I'll run into you somewhere at some mall uh, when I go and have coffee. Uh, but thank you very much. So let me quickly see. Um, great. Now the FBI convention. Lacquer, Carol, beautiful story. Thank you. Uh, or maybe in Cape Town. Yes, absolutely, because I'm going to be coming to Cape Town. So uh, definitely, uh, hybrid virtual life in-person show, that is just exactly that. Uh, do things cost-effectively. Um, yes, so, uh, but what we want to do is like, we've got to create experiences along the way as well. And I also want to make this virtual community a real community. So that's part of the reason why I want to start getting people together. 
and uh, have that. But also, I mean, we'll get it. Well, there will probably be sponsors and things like that uh, for the venue and, and all of that. But we, I don't want to sell tickets for people to attend this. This is just going to be, listen, we have it. First come, first serve. There's 50 places or 100 places or whatever. And that's what we'll do. Uh, so that's the idea behind it. Laka, have a good one. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, this morning was a quick one. Go and enjoy the, the financial planning convention. And uh, I will see you back on Tuesday. Thank you very much. Have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.